Hey friend, so today I am going to talk about something that I don't really see a lot of people do with AI tools, and that is actually reverse engineering a process or reverse engineering really anything that has made you do something, that has made you take action and behave in a certain way. So I'm going to do this using a personal experience of mine in the last few weeks. I'd been sent an email for a sale of a course I'd been umming and ahhing about doing for like six to eight months now. And I'd seen lots of emails previously, but this particular email at a particular time actually made me take action and force the behavior change for me to buy the course and then use it. And I found it incredibly helpful. So what I'm gonna do is take that email that made me actually make that purchase and work with AI to see if I can reverse engineer and understand why did I do that? Why did I take action on that particular email? What was in that email that may have helped do that, that influenced me and got me to that conclusion? The email itself came from Caitlin Bourgeon. I hope I'm saying that properly. If I'm not, I apologize, who is a marketing psychology expert and has a fantastic email newsletter called Why We Buy. I bought a product from her library called Wallet Opening Words, which I also highly recommend, and it's a great product. So we're gonna look at that email that came from Caitlin, and then we're gonna look at why did I take action? And let's see if AI can help us with that. So we're gonna jump across into that, and I'll show you the AI tool, how I'm setting this up, and also my thinking process behind this, because as I always say, human reasoning is incredibly important in how we work with AI. And I mean, this is just a great example of how we can do it. Full disclosure, this is the second time of me filming this part because I filmed a whole 15 minute section and never turned on the audio or video. So I just had a blank video. So I'm gonna jump in between what I just did that you haven't seen and how I'm showing you here. So as I was mentioning before, I've got this email from a course that I bought. I really wanna reverse engineer and understand what were the behavioral triggers that made me buy? And what can I learn from that as well? So I'm using a, a tool that you may have seen me use before called Google AI Studio. I'm doing that because I don't want to see AI tool or seem AI tool agnostic. There's loads of great tools out there. I appreciate not everyone has access to paid tools. So I'm using this kind of free sandbox area that anyone can get access to, to demonstrate this. But there are many other and great AI tools for you to use to do this as well. And if you want to follow along, you know, it's a free account to sign up. You can see that I have selected the Gemini 2.5 preview model here because it's the latest model to play around with. And I think it's pretty good. So I loaded my email via PDF and I'm going to ask Gemini to work with me so we can analyze this and find out a bit more about why did I do what I did in terms of making the purchase. So I've already got the problem I put together from the previous video. So I'm going to break it down there and explain why I've done what I've done because you always want to be incredibly contextual to these tools in what do you want to achieve? What do they need to know? And offer your ideas and thoughts as well. So first things first, what I have said is that what's it just email about the course that I bought. I told it I bought the course. I want to understand why did I make that choice based on that email? What triggered me to take that action? So we're going to reverse engineer this email together so I can understand that. And then what I've done is I've offered maybe some ways that we can do this together. I think the most productive I've said, my opinion, is a Q&A approach, but I'm open to suggestions from Gemini. What I want to get to is the end goal is twofold, to get clarity on what triggered me to make the purchase and what I can learn from this email about promoting my own courses, because I have my own course business and I, I always want to learn. I always want to understand more. So I just say to Gemini, right, are you ready for that? And then we can kick off and do this together. And it'll take a little bit of time because this is a, a pretty big model. It's digesting information. And we can see his thinking process here so we can go through and see all the lovely things it's thinking and analyzing right now, which is great, but we shall leave that. Depending upon how long this takes, I may fast forward this bit because sometimes it can be, but I don't need to because here we are. So is it ready to dive in and ask it questions? But we're going to change that. So what we're going to do is say, I want it to ask me questions. And for that, I'm going to go back to my previous one, which I've already got. <laughs> We've gone through the questions because I'm not going to go through the questions again. So what I said there to that one was, 
actually, I want you to ask me the questions so I can learn what triggered me to buy because I don't really need to be asking Gemini questions. And then we've changed that here. So you can see Gemini is going to ask me the question. The first question you can see here is that when I first saw the email, what was my initial reaction to the subject line and the sender? And you can see what I said here. So I said, well, it caught my eye because I trust that sender. And also the preview text, which I remember seeing on there, which said that there was a, a discount of 32%. Well, I thought it was a bit odd and that caught my eye because that's not really usual. And then we go through again and immediately what Jim and I has done is identified a few things that are really useful for me is that I trust in the sender in Caitlin. And also there was that curiosity and specificity as well. And then the next question from Gemini was then looking at reading the first few paragraphs in the email, you know, what resonated with me. And I really like this bit about current pressures or goals that are related to my work, particularly concerning copywriting. Now, I'm always looking to improve my copywriting skills. You know, it is a continual process to do that and it never ends. But what really caught my eye and what I've said here is the last bit. It. So the last bit it, we were talking about making smart copy tweaks today that drove conversions. That really resonated with me when I thought about, well, that's outcome focused. And I really like that to think about the, how I can make a few potentially small things from what I understand here, but really smart ways that could drive more conversions in my work. So yeah, that caught my attention. Again, what I really like here at Gemini like, continue to do is to say, look, these are the techniques that are actually being used here. So I'm learning as we go and understand it. Oh, okay. So there's a whole structure around this. There's reasons why these kind of ideas, these kind of techniques are being used. And it's very easy for me to kind of look at that and understand that and assimilate that and use them. I like this next question here. So this is probably one of the biggest ones where on the email it's saying about it was impromptu flash sale. And then Gemini is asking me through the specific presentation of the offer, what affected my perception of the product and deal? And I thought this is a great question because what I said here, as you can see, is that I thought it was a great deal on the product from someone that I trust after consuming their content for the last year. And I didn't want to miss out because I'd always been thinking about it. And I was like, I'm in an R in and it's a lot of procrastination. Some key things here that really kind of clicked for me is that it took a year. So I've been consuming Caitlin's content and then I finally, you know, pulled the trigger a year later. So sometimes the buying cycle can be quite long. And if there's any salespeople watching this, you'll know what I'm talking about pretty much. So don't think that long-term relationships, consuming content, all of that is not going to lead to somewhere because it can. So that combination of a great deal on a product from someone that I trust really resonated for me. That's what I try and do in my own work. You know, people who are watching this, hopefully you feel that if you have made any contributions to my work, as an example, is that I've earned your trust and I've shown my credibility to help you in what you do. And then the final bit where I kind of left it off, because I think we start to get the point here. And this is probably one of the most pivotal bits that I like, because if you remember at the start of the conversation, I said my goal was to understand what are the triggers that made me act upon this email that made me buy the product and go forth. And I love this roundup here that highlighting the power of combining several psychological triggers. So what I've been able to understand is there is authority. There's the discount that caught me. There is the FOMO, the fear of me saying, oh my God, you know, there's this great product I've been thinking about for ages. You know, it's on sale. It's might be a good opportunity for me to get on board with that because, you know, what's going to happen? I'm just going to keep going down this avenue and not do anything with it. And then the action trigger. So very intelligently, it highlighted that I mentioned about procrastinating and urgency being a powerful antidote to procrastination. So by Caitlin kind of putting in that deadline, I was like, I need to face this. I need to do something about that. And I thought that was interesting as well. Um, and then we can see here overall, and I'll, I'll finish it here is that it's really helped me. And hopefully you can see during this process and see the question and answers going backwards and forwards. And this is the beauty of having the conversation at AI tools is I can understand why I have behaved in that way, what's triggered me and in making that purchase. So I'm reverse engineering that process in some way, but at the same time, I am also learning about a subject I am not so deeply knowledgeable in. And I can take what I've learned here and bring it into my own practice and experiment with that because now I understand how an expert like Caitlin is using some of those things and I'm using AI to break down that process. So in sum, this is another way that you can work in collaboration with AI. As I always say, and I'm a broken record, right? 
use these tools to elevate your human intelligence. Yes, you could ask some of these to do all of this for you and maybe have no interaction. But where is the learning for you in that? In this way, what you're able to do is engage some critical thinking, have some logical reasoning and work in a back and forth fashion. A little bit like a coach, which I think is where AI can be really useful in both the education and learning fields, however you define them. So look, I hope that's been helpful. If you've done anything similar or you want to see more stuff like this, let me know in the comments wherever you are viewing this. And as always, I will talk to you in the next one. Ciao.